we're back. I watched episode three of Rings of Power. Uh, uh, mm, hmm, hmm, hmm. Okay, so we open with the elf guy that I still don't care about, and um, it's a shame because I think this, if they had established the camaraderie of this elf troop, I think there it would be there'd be something to grab onto. Like these people are stuck together and they have to work out, almost do it like a prison escape thing. But you don't care about any of them and you don't understand their relationship to each other very well. You know who's their leader and that's it. And even when they get killed you, and they have like hardcore Gregorian chant music over top their deaths, you're like, and? But I will say this is the episode where I actually felt an emotion for the first time watching uh, his scenes, which is when they forced him to cut down the tree, they really failed to build that up and explain why that's important. I know that that means something. Like I can understand because it's Tolkien, how that would be emotional, but they have not established that. It does not work out of context, only because I have the context and that it, it has emotional resonance that he has to cut down the tree but they they completely fail to set up why that could be powerful in a different show with better writing so we go to Numenor and right off the bat I burst into hysterical laughter what are the chances that Galadriel gets picked up by a boat captained by Elendil that is absurd that is ridiculous it it, it was like what okay sure sure Sure, the chances. Actually, yeah, we're gonna, we're gonna we'll, we'll put a pin in that. Pretty much the entirety of the Numenorean stuff is borderline insufferable, which is a shame because that's such a that's society that I was excited to see. Uh, Galadriel, she's insufferable. She like can't she can't step on the brakes. She just can't. It's just it's like, lady, what are you doing? How, how the hell did you survive in Melian's court for a thousand years if this is how you act at court? Like, what? What? Okay. Um, uh, and then just, then they go to this library and there's this bizarre scene where she's riding a horse to the, to the library and it's shot, I don't understand it, it's shot in slow motion and she's like happy on this horse. I think it does not make sense. It, it comes, it's out of nowhere, tonally doesn't work and it's shot in a way that doesn't feel congruent with what's actually happening uh it, it's ridiculous i think what happened is maybe some notes they got from the higher ups was like galadriel is never happy in this entire show we should have a scene where she's happy and then they throw this in but it doesn't make any sense let's talk about halbrand all right so i i know who he is it's pretty obvious they're not subtle about it at all <laughs> he's I understand what they're going for. And I think in, in concept, this was potentially a good idea of like, we, the people who have read the books, you know, we know about Anatar. We, we, we will know it's him if, if they introduce him as Anatar and they were going to try, I can see why they were trying to like, okay, let's create a new character that people um, don't know is Sauron. So he can have like his deceiver cunning trickster ways. And I think in concept, that's that's a good idea that like that could work but that it does not work the way they did it at all because you're already suspicious of him you he's introduced happens to be the only guy on this boat like the idea of like lost king of the southlands happens to be on the same like shipwreck that galadriel stumbles into is so contrived that you're immediately suspicious of it and i think it would have made way more sense to introduce him in numenor I mean, Sauron has things to do in Numenor. It just makes sense for him to be there. And if he was introduced in a more uh, natural way, we would have, I think, lowered our guards. That's the first thing about that. And him, I was paying attention to the actor's performance. There's acting choices. I'm not crazy about what he decided to do. But what I thought he was doing pretty well was like his facial expressions through all the scenes. I think on a first read, you could totally read as, oh, he's kind of overwhelmed or doesn't know what's going on or whatnot. And on a second read, knowing what you know, it's like, oh, he's in control. Like he's not, there's, he's, he knows exactly what's happening. So I think facial expression wise, I was like, okay, that could be Sauron. Uh, all the way up until 
he steals the guild crest, like the blacksmith and guild crest. That sequence is when the suspension of disbelief that this could be Sauron was shattered. Um, it, because that it was so, it was such a stupid action that you just can't imagine someone that's this cunning and trick cunning would, would do. And also why it, like, what, what is, what is the end goal for this? It doesn't make any sense. And also like he gets caught by, by a man. And like, it, it, did he mean to get caught? Does he want to be in prison? Like, is that, is that what this is? But it's, it, it's not shot that way. And then him beating these people up, it just, it doesn't feel like Sauron. It, it feels like a man. Um, so I I didn't like that. I was on board with him being Sauron. The actions he took were like, that could, if I squint, be Sauron fine until that moment. And that it, then it was broken. And, and then they just throw plots at you. So the, so Isil, so we're having this dinner with Elendil and Sildor and, and Sildor's sister. And they're just like we barely met these people but now they're talking about like Isildur's career and Elend like there's there's all this stuff that you're they're getting thrown at and like okay that's fine then at the tail end of it very like out of nowhere tacked on to the scene she's like his Isildur's sister is like hey I was accepted into the builders guild like what just out of nowhere it it's not it doesn't flow in a natural way it's like I we needed to get this information across let's just tack it at the end it's and, and then they cut away from that, like that was the climactic part of that scene. What? What? No, no. Uh, it would make more sense if you were doing that scene to have it start with her like, hey, I was accepted into the Builders Guild at the dinner table. And then they transition to, hey, Isildur, what are your career plans? That flows a little better than just kind of out of nowhere at the end. Just It did not work. Oh my god. The problem with the Numenorean stuff, I think fundamentally, beyond some of the shaky writing and silly plot contrivances is there's it is an explosion of subplots we were already stretching thin with all these these plots with the proto hobbits and the southlands healer lady and the southlands elf guy and elrond and the dwarves and galadriel and and we, we were already thin stretched thin right now now that we've gotten to numenor we've got uh halbrand's plot We've got uh, Galadriel's plot. We've got Elendil's plot. We got Isildur's plot. We got Isildur's sister's plot. Oh my God! And the Queen of Numenor and her father and the Chancellor. And it's just—it's too much. Wait, it's so stretched thin that it just is jumping around. It's kind of taken a page out of Game of Thrones' book. The the worst page to take from Game of Thrones because one of Game of Thrones' weakest structural uh, elements was the fact that it had so many disparate plots all over the place that didn't really connect to each other. And so the pacing of some of those episodes were a little strange because it was hard to go from one scene to a completely different scene in a, a different continent, right? And they're doing the same thing here. For some reason, the moment you start to get into the groove of the scene and, and start to, to connect to the characters ever, they cut away. They're like scared to stay with the characters, which is so foolish. It's it's just like, let let the story breathe. But you can't, they don't, they, they have too much going on. Um, we go back to the homeless Renaissance fair, and they, uh, they're consistently the best written parts, barring some pretty significant exceptions. Nobody goes up train. And nobody walks alone. That's right. Nobody goes up train. And nobody walks alone. Uh, but the dialogue there is by far the most natural. They, they sound the most like people out of the entire show. Um, the char the main character, Nori, I think the actress has a lot of charisma and she, she's just a like, she's, she's pretty likable as a character compared to a lot of other choices in this show. Uh, so I, I'm enjoying those scenes. Uh, there's, there's, they, they're just, oh my God, my standards are getting so low, but they, they function as a scene. They function, which is nice. That's nice. But that, that's about it for... That's what I have to say on that one. I, I don't know. On to the next one.